We are here on the Zero Project Conference premises in Vienna, and we will have one hour together where we'll do some interactive drawing. Okay, now before we start, let me tell you that we will record this session. It is Friday afternoon at the Zero Project Conference, and we are assuming that many people maybe are not able to follow us at the moment. So we will record the session. Uh, and it will be uploaded to our video streaming platform later on. But be aware that we will cut out all the private information or uh, also black out your face and your name if you don't want to be in the video. But just to make sure if you do not want to be in the video um, to turn off your camera. Um, we are here in the room with several people. My colleagues uh, will help me with inviting you all in so that I can concentrate on drawing together with you. I'll wait a few more seconds because I can see people coming in before we start. Once again, please uh, be reminded that we will record this session so that it can be used later on. OK. All right. For those of you who need um, captioning, make sure that you turn on the automatic captioning in Microsoft Teams. That should work perfectly. We can see it on our screen. It's quite understandable. Okay. Well, welcome. Welcome to Drawing with Petra. Uh, I will be on two screens for you. We, my colleague will switch from one camera to the other. But before I share, share my slides with you, let me give you a quick overview on what we will do within the next 60 minutes. First of all, I will give you an overview on our philosophy at Zero Project on zero barrier information. I will give you an insight to the technique of graphic recording in easy or easier language. And I will show you some tips and tricks on how you can utilize this method to prepare for your presentations. OK. Well, I can see we're quite a few people here in the chat. I can um, see some names. Hello and welcome to Drawing with Petra. OK, let's get started. What you need for now, because this will be interactive, is pen. Any pen or pencil will do and a piece of paper. OK, I don't know. Maybe you have a post-it note or some scribble paper. It doesn't have to be pretty. Anything you have on hand. Um, if you use digital media, we will come to that later. You can, of course, also use your digital media. OK, are you ready? Let's get started. OK, so first I told you. You need pen and paper. I will use. My black hand because this is easier to do when you work on a digital surface and a digital pen. Now let's switch to the slides. OK, first we said we need some pen and paper. See, this is not pretty, but I guess you get the message, right? OK, so pen and paper, you ready? The next thing you do, and that could be a bit more difficult, is Put yourself into a mindset where you think of somebody you think of a person um, who might have difficulties in reading or whose literacy or language skills are limited. So that could be someone who is probably not good in reading text or understanding complicated information. So your job as a graphic facilitator is to put yourself in the, into that mind frame, into that mindset that you are now targeting towards someone who is not so good in reading and has not so much um, access to information. It might be a person who has a different language background, it could be a person um, with a very difficult upbringing, maybe someone who never went to school because of neglected chances um, or limited access to social or financial capital. 
I'm quite sure many of you can relate to this. You either work for this target group, maybe are from the target group, or you know someone who has these disadvantages. This is why we're here. This is what we're doing today. Yeah. <clears throat> so you might think um, it is very hard to please everyone. Yeah. Now we're thinking about people who are not so good in education, but our job will be at least to try. And this is why I'm here and this is why I'm doing my job. So let me see. I hope that um, we can get a little bit of interaction here. Um, who of you is thinking that they cannot draw? Maybe you can raise your hand or give me some sign. And I also ask my colleagues to help me to uh, look at the chat. Who thinks that they cannot draw? Ah, some hands are showing up, I can see. I guess, I guess we're a few of us, right? I'm raising my hand too. You know what? <laughs> and the people in the room are also raising their hand. Um, well, let me tell you something about me. I'm not a painter and I'm not an artist. I'm a person who has had the honor to work with and for people with disabilities for almost 20 years. During this time, I realized that my passion for drawing, and I'm saying ta passion, not talent, huh? my passion for drawing can be of help to turn complex information into small bits and pieces. So most of the people in the room that are present, and that could be digitally as well, um, most people in the room can get a glimpse of what we are talking about. Okay. So I also realized that I can give a voice to those who lack the words to express their needs, wants and dreams. And again, many of you who are here probably have this experience as well. Either you are lacking words or you know someone who does not know how to express their feelings, their emotions and their most important needs and wants. So this is why we are here. Um, I want to be part of a world with zero barriers, a world that does not exclude people from vital information and anything that is relevant to their life. And another important reason I'm uh, part of the Zero Project Conference very proudly and for quite a long time. Uh, many of us here are not native speakers, neither am I. Not the speakers are native English speakers and not the participants, most of us. So drawing and helping us draw can um, really support understanding for everyone. Okay, so enough of the chit chat. Let's jump right into it. So once again, who thinks they cannot draw? You don't have to raise your hands. I saw that before. Now, let me ask you another question. Who believes they cannot write? Hmm? See? Most of you know how to write, and this is the first trick I want to show you. You know, you would, you would be able to write Uzmo, right? You can see it here, or move, whatever it means, but you are able to write this. Am I correct? Okay, now get your pen and paper ready. We're now doing some practical experience. Uzmo. I didn't invent that, and a colleague of mine came up with this, but let me show you. Making sure. Okay. Black is always a good uh, color to start with. So it's a U, a Z, M, and O. And here we have our light bulb. There we go. It's easy, isn't it? The next thing, the move word. Huh? You can draw an M, two O's, maybe a third one, and a little V. And then you have a funny looking pig, maybe. What I always do is I say what I'm drawing because people don't always understand what I mean. But this could be something like a pig. If you know how to draw, you know, if you know how to write, you can draw. We don't go for pretty. We go for better understanding. That's that's what we want to do. OK. So 
your first task. And now, of course, it would be really fun if you could show things into the camera, but you don't have to. Yeah? But you have a first task. Draw disability. And I will give you a few moments without talking. Take a piece of paper and draw disability. <clears throat> and if you have questions, write it to the chat, or if you have comments, show it into the camera. I'm also holding seminars like this, and people are always a little bit overwhelmed at the beginning with drawing something, but we'll get there. Okay. I'm hoping that you are really using this opportunity to try this, because it's supposed to be fun, right? You've been sitting in front of the computer for the last couple of days, hopefully, uh, and now, we want to be a little bit interactive. I wish we could see each other again, but maybe next year. All right. OK, so let's see. How many of you drew a wheelchair when they drew disability or who came up with the idea to draw a wheelchair? Please, by show of hands, let me know. Ah, see, quite a lot of people. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, Seema. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people come up with their first association. Yeah. And here we see a big disadvantage of this method, to be honest. Um, it has to be quick and it has to show the main point that we want to show. So oftentimes we have to turn to cliches and especially in a world like ours, we don't want to be discriminating against anybody. It is really difficult to not hit into those basic ideas that we always that always pops up in our head. But actually, we want people to understand what we're talking about. So it's a bit of a dilemma. So let's think of other aspects of diversity in terms of disability. I picked a picture that I drew already a couple of weeks ago. And I always try to include other disabilities into this drawing, into my drawings. On the left side, I was thinking about a woman who is blind and who is using her cane. The next person is probably someone using his hands to sign in sign language. Of course, somebody in a wheelchair, but I tried to show that this is a young person wearing his cap, his little cap, um, showing that he's probably part of a younger target group. Uh, we also have to show the differentiation between men, men and women. Again, we have to use cliches. Not every woman does have long hair and not every man is short haired. Huh? Not everybody has white skin color. It is very, very difficult, as you can see, but we have to take that disadvantage um, as part of the job and try to do our best. Now, let me show you a little trick what I do to draw hands because often I have to draw sign language and it is really difficult to draw hands. So I'm using a trick and I will share that with you. Okay, I do something partially illegal and don't do that at home. Yes, do that at home, but Make sure you don't show that in the internet too much, okay? What I do, I go into a search engine and I look for da 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 icon. In this case, I said, okay, sign language icon. And this is what I got. Now, you can either do that on your screen or on a piece of paper. Or if I do zero project conference on a big paper, don't tell anyone, I prepared little stickers with hands and then I stick it on and then I draw it. But don't tell anyone, it's a big secret, okay? So what you can do is you copy that. Now, let me show you. I'm using my trusted pen and then I just make a form around 
these hands. You can try to follow me to draw hands. Maybe you are more talented than I, and you can do that from scratch, but I always need some help here. Okay. Or even more difficult without cheating, these kinds of hands. So, I love this glamorous pen color. Okay. It's not perfect again. And what I do next is I delete the picture. And see, haha, <laughs> I drew something. Well, teach your children to do that. That's how you learn drawing. See, it's not perfect. Again, we're not going for perfect. We're going for understandable. And we're going for including people with all kinds of disabilities. Yeah? Not to be minimized to a certain person, personality, and so on. OK. Shall we try to get some comments here? Anybody who would like to say something or share their experience? You're more than welcome. Maybe you can write it in the chat. And I will have assistance here in the room to help me read the chat. OK, so would be nice to know what you do, and I would love to meet up with you and talk about this method, because I know I'm not the only one in this world. And exchange is really important. This is why conferences like this are so vital. <clears throat> okay. Whew. Any comments in the chat? Okay. So let's get going then. Fine with me. Okay, now next, what I would like to do is to give you um, an insight on how I do my summaries for zero project conferences. Now, those of you who have been to live conferences, probably we have met before. We have probably seen each other. Um, I'm usually the one running around with um, bags of pens and big paper, and I'm trying to be there and summarize whatever is being said. And let me show you a picture of like, I think it's two years ago or three years ago. That was when we could still meet and when we could see each other. Uh, what happens there is um, the chair and board are holding their presentation. And then I listen to what they say. I draw on real paper and then there is a team with a camera captioning what I am looking at to show it to the audience. Now this all looks very simple and people always come up to me and say, wow, you're so clever, you can do everything at once and you can do that and it's so amazing. And again, I have to share a big secret. It's not as easy as it looks like <laughs> and it takes a lot of preparation. Um, I'm actually in the same shoes. I walk in the same shoes as sign language interpreters, for instance. I really, really need information ahead of time. So let me try to explain and show you what I do. OK. Um, I usually, and I do this for Zero Project, but also for other um, venues and events. So let me switch to another color. I can think, yeah, I think you can see what I'm doing, right? This is good. So um, I get information. Oopsie, that's too big. <laughs> you can watch live how this works. OK, I get information. I usually use a blue eye, like information sign you see on the airports or stuff like that. OK, so I receive information on the presentation or on whatever is going to be said ahead of time. Now, what does that mean? Well, if I can choose, I would like to get this, I don't know, two weeks before, depending on the venue. For Zero Project, that's something else, but I will talk to talk about that later. I need information really at least a week before because I'm not always, you know, in the creative mindset and I need to read everything. What I then do is um, I take a good look at this information and I think 
do a lot of thinking. I think what are the main messages of this text, video, PowerPoint presentation? What does the person behind this information really want to tell us? And that I prepare. Now, let me show you first an example on how I did that for this year's conference where everything was digitally. <clears throat> um, maybe, uh, yes, uh, two days ago you watched uh, our session on cutting edge technologies. So what happened there? I received the link for the video on cutting edge technologies that was show, show, showed. See, I'm not a native speaker that we saw at the beginning of the session. And I received the link like five, six days ahead of time. And in this case, that was really enough um, because it was one session I had to prepare for. Um, I listened to the video, I think five times, and then I took notes. What's the most important message behind this video? And then I thought, OK, um, what's the message? Like, like, what's the message if we think in the context of zero project? And this is what I came up with. It was about technical solutions for the ITC sector and assistive technologies. So I thought of, OK, how do we draw assistive? Something that is supportive, assistive technology. And also, what does ICT stand for? We might think that everybody knows what ICT stands for, but believe me, not everybody does. So I thought, OK, maybe I have to add this information. So I said, OK, ICT is the shortcut for information and communication technology. Then there was this question, um, how does that relate to people with disabilities? And one message I heard from that video was, assistive technologies can help to overcome different kinds of barriers. And then I thought, how do I draw overcoming barriers with assistive technologies? And this is what I came up with. Some device that sends a Wi-Fi signal even though there are steps and stairs in the way. Is that the only way to say it? Does everybody understand? I'm not sure, but I hope that people see from the picture the, the main message. I'll just quickly go through some of the slides. You will get them as a um, file if you're interested in that and if you saw the session. So let's not just, let's not um, concentrate too much. Oh, we have two questions in the chat. Wait, <laughs> I have to turn in the on the chat function. OK. Or my colleagues could. Ah, here it is. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Technical. We will cut that out for the upload. Um, where are the questions? OK, my colleagues will ask the question and I will repeat it. So Peter. Do you have something like a base library of things you use most often in Join? OK, the question is if I have a base library of things I use most often in drawing, and the answer is yes. Um, I didn't bring it with me, but I have a little A5 um, booklet where I collect the ideas that I gather along while I, while I do my drawings. And I started to make a little um, library on my on my shared device. It's not here again because it's a big cloud and the surface doesn't have so much space. So I made kind of vocabulary JPEGs that I also have in the background. Yeah. So for instance, the picture you saw before, let me just go back to that. Doop, doop. Repeating is good, by the way. This one, for instance. This is a vocabulary I created um, to show an old man who has difficulties in reading. LL in German stands for Leicht Lesen. In English, that would be easy to read with someone who is supporting him. OK, so um, yes, I do have a lot of vocabulary. What is the second question? The second question is from Patrick Randell. AAC symbols? No, I have not yet tried to include AAC symbols and I'm looking forward to do so. Okay, 
Oh, by the way, there's another vocabulary I use a lot. Um, again, this is in German, but I'm sure you have seen similar drawings. This is uh, nothing about us without us. One of the messages of people with disabilities who want to make sure that they are viewed as experts in their own topics. OK. So let's go back to the example I just showed from our session on cutting edge technology. <laughs> One thing I, I'm also always asked is how do you come up with picture ideas? Again, this is half legal. Um, I put the word I'm looking for into the search engine and then I see what other people came up with. That could be photographs, but it could also be drawings, icons. So you can enter whatever um, company and icon and then you will get some icons and they are of course easier to copy with your pen and paper. Um, yeah, so this example is a big company that includes um, people with disabilities in their product development. Not the easiest language, to be honest. If I would do this together with a group of um, people with learning disabilities, that would have to be broken down even smaller to explain what we mean. But I think for a conference like ours, where not, not all of us are native speakers, I'm hoping that this can assist us. OK. So let me just show you um, one of the examples I drew. Um, again, I don't have feedback yet on that, and, but I will get it because I will talk to people with learning disabilities and I will show that to them. Um, one assistive technology we heard about was Ask Toby, where there is an internet platform, a common search engine, um, and there is an add-on to that, so it provides easy results so I can understand it. Now, one thing I would like to show you is this slide. I did not really go onto that slide or show this slide um, during the session, but I believe, I personally believe, it makes sense to provide some written text, some short written text, so for people who look at the slides later on know what this drawing was all about. Because the picture itself is interesting if it is supported by words, spoken words, but afterwards it's sometimes really hard to understand what was meant with this picture, with this drawing. Okay, again another project that we heard about. And last but not least also um, about sign language. And here you can see if I don't have any template to draw hands, that's how they look like. But I hope um, it's understandable that this is about sign language. Okay. One really important thing, if I prepare for a um, summary, and you know, I, get the pic I do the pictures and then I summarize in my words what I heard. So what I normally do is before I start, I go and talk to the presenters and ask them for their, as Wilfried always says, famous last words. Because first of all, whenever they, most of the times a presentation ends with some really interesting and main summary information. I, on the other hand, have to prepare to hold the presentation in like two seconds. So for me, it is really, really helpful if I get the key message ahead of time. That's why normally before a session, I go and ask the speakers, what is your key message? What will be the last sentence you're going to say? That helps me a lot because there I can prepare something or you know draw it already on the paper or in, in my slides. So if I come up to you next time and ask you, what are your famous last words for your presentation? Make sure to give me something I can draw. OK, here I used um, from the video the example on how um, cutting edge technology will benefit a blind person. It will empower the blind person, but um, it is also beneficial for others. Actually, most of the technical support we get is beneficial for all of us. So this was what I tried. OK, this was an example on how I prepare if I get all the information ahead of time 
and if I have time to draw. So are there any more questions in the chat right now? No? OK. Let me show you a bit later. Um, I do have a lot of digital devices now. Nice Christmas present. Um, I got Microsoft Surface. I got my Apple iPad with a pen. <clears throat> and I also used my last used uh, loyalty program points for <laughs> buying um, Galaxy Note. And with this, I can also draw very quickly, like our Insta story that should be up today, I, I guess. Um, I drew here on Galaxy Note. So this is just a notepad and a pen, and it goes very quickly. That's really helpful. So for those of you who have access to any of these, or I don't know, there are Samsung tablets, all kinds of tablets. If you have access to this, you'll be able to do your own drawings to prepare. And it's a lot, a lot of fun, actually. Yeah. Again, we don't go for perfect. We go for understandable. Yeah. OK, so I prepare for this presentation. In this case, you just saw the slides. Now, what happens? Um, if speakers don't stick to what they sent in advance. That also happens, right? You're on stage and you're like, ah, the audience is probably interested in other things. And then you switch your focus of your presentation from what you usually on the slides to something else. This is when I start sweating. Yeah. At the live event, <laughs> you will see me with a red head and a red face because I get very nervous <laughs> because I never know what's going to happen. Uh, but what I have realized, actually these kind of summaries turn out to be quite to the point because my head had, did not have so much time to think about it and I just have to come up with whatever quickly pops to my mind. So let me show you this again from our session. So if you want to compare that, ah, there's another question. Of the multiple devices, which software tools do you use for drawing? Same on all devices or different tax solutions? Ah, thank you for that question. It's a very good question. Um, let me answer it right now and I will skip it later. I, I will repeat the question. Sorry. Yeah. The question was if I always use the same software or the same application on all the devices or different applications on different devices. For now, it's a different application on every device. Um, I wish it was one for everything, but it's not. So what I am looking for, and I can highly recommend, um, a simple thing. Yeah? Like here, the Galaxy Note, it's not meant for graphic designers. It's meant for taking little notes. So there is an app for this Galaxy Note called Note, and it provides you with a basic black or green or whatever color pen, pencil, some highlighting, and some forms you can add. So it's not much. And this is really vital. So if you look for a software or an application, make sure it's not too complicated if you're not a graphic designer, because then you know how to use these tools. I'm not. So I'm on Microsoft. I'm using the whiteboard that came ready installed to that um, device. And um, I mean, I, I, I'll try to show you this yeah, on my computer, but I think if I switch uh, programs, we might have problems in the stream. So let's do that at the end. Nevertheless, um, if I use a Microsoft product, I do have this whiteboard in the background. Or in that case, I use the opportunity to draw right into PowerPoint. And this is something that hopefully all of you have access to. Even if you don't have a pen, you might even be able to draw with your finger. Let's see if that works today. Let's if I want to show something, it never does. Yeah, so it, in this case, it, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can promise you, you can also draw with your finger if you don't have a pen. But really, if you do have a surface or any kind of tablet, invest in something like this. It's not so expensive and it will make your life easier. So um, Microsoft PowerPoint is a very good tool. For those of you who are Apple users, um, I now tried um, Adobe Draw because, 
again, this is it's a free app if you have an Apple device, and um, it's quite simple. Exact, actually, it does have a few hiccups, but for drawing and the pictures you saw before were drawn, drawn, were drawn on uh, on the iPad. Again, I'm using free applications as far as possible because it gets quite costly if you buy all of it. I hope this answers your question. If you have more questions, I will my, my email address will be here. You can always contact me anytime. OK, so let's go back to this quickly, quick and dirty, <laughs> quick and dirty note taking. Um, for those of you who watched the session together with Wilfried, um, he was asking the experts on board several questions. So I wrote down the question in that case, what can we take away from cutting edge, te cutting edge technology? And the experts gave their answers. And while they were speaking, I drew this. So this was live. And here you can see already the difference between the pictures you saw before and here because here it had to be quick and dirty, and here I really just used um, Microsoft PowerPoint function to draw. Big disadvantage, if you draw a lot in Microsoft PowerPoint, the file gets huge, like huge, huge, because Microsoft thinks that every little drawing is a separate file. So this is why I prepare pictures ahead of time, so the PowerPoint presentation doesn't turn out to be, I don't know, one gigabyte. Nevertheless, it is really helpful, and for little add-ons, you can always use that. OK, another summary, what are the trends? The question was, what are the trends in cutting-edge technologies? And we heard about technology around the corner, um, robotics, and all kinds of sensors, but also the Internet of Things. And here you can already see my, my method. Yeah, let's switch over the next um, slides. And let me, before I talk about the ideal word, let me tell you what happens in my head. And I know from my colleagues, this is also what happens in other graphic facilitators' heads. We listen, we draw, add some, some words. Sometimes it's important because I need a reference later on. And then we make a summary based on the pictures. And this is why the summary turns out to be, hopefully, more to the point or to a different point. Explain things in different words and together with some pictures. So that the people around us can use my imagination, and it's only in my head, yeah, um, to relate to what they heard. And they can either agree or disagree, but it will make it stick in their head a bit better than it would have been without the summary. So this is what I do. Now, let's come to the ideal world. In an ideal world, I would be doing this, everything I'm doing, together with people with learning difficulties. But I don't, for several reasons. First of all, to my defense, I can assure you that I developed my method um, together with people with learning disabilities. I've been working in one-on-one -on -one and in workshop sessions with people with learning difficulties for the last 10 to 15 years very intensely. Um, so my method is based on this experience. And I do have a lot of very smart, very motivated people with learning difficulties in the background that give me feedback. And normally, if it's a live conference, they will say, Petra, we did not understand what you just said. Can you please say it in other words? Or can you draw a different picture? So I do get a lot of immediate feedback. Um, but let's be honest. How many people with learning difficulties do you know who are fluent in a foreign language? In our case, English. Well, I don't. Um, I'm really hoping this will change as people with learning difficulties now get more and more access to education and they learn not only writing and reading and everything they were supposed to learn from the beginning, but also other languages. But as far as I know, at the moment, there are not too many people with learning difficulties who speak fluent English, so they cannot help me here. So I have to do that 
you know, in my own head. Um, but let me give you some tips um, what you could do to prepare your presentation so that it can be understood once it's transferred to easier English. And let's not forget, um, we are also doing this for people who have maybe not had too much chances to learn reading. And here I talk especially about deaf people. Um, you, I guess we are here, we are insiders, you all know that, but let me repeat. Deaf people have a different mother language. Their mother language is sign language. Written language is an abstractation of the spoken word. Sign language follows a different grammar. And that's why many deaf people um, do have difficulties in reading text. And if it has to be interpreted into sign language, it should be slow. I always get feedback that I'm too, too quick. It should be slow and it should use easy words. Not every word we have in the spoken language already exists in sign language and especially not in international sign. So again, this is support. This, you know, this method should support people with all kinds of difficulties in understanding the spoken or the written word. And yes, we are discriminating against blind people if we only show pictures. This is why I always talk a lot. Okay, let me um, give you some more examples, but I would really like to come to some more um, drawing. Uh, here is an example uh, where I drew somebody who's like, I'm, I know what I'm doing, I'm strong and I'm empowered. Here I had time to prepare. And there people were telling me, okay, how do we empower a person? And um, this drawing is supposed to show a person with disability who is uh, being empowered by someone who used to have the power before. Maybe their supporter, maybe the personnel um, supporting them. So just another example. Okay. So tips on what you can do to prepare for your next session for Zero Project Conference. First of all, uh, listen to what your colleagues say or what you as an expert know about your project and think of the key elements. This is, let me show you this quickly. PowerPoint, Microsoft PowerPoint once again. Key elements. Yeah. What are the key factors? What are the things that could be most useful for somebody else? Because why are we here with Zero Project? We want to create the best possible impact transfer. And impact can only be transferred if I can explain what the impact actually does and how to do it. So many of you have done that before. Let me just remind you the key factors of success are the most important messages you have to bring to the conference. And then if you want to do us a favor, and I'm talking about me and all my colleagues from the sign language interpretation team, uh, send your texts, your PowerPoints, your video links, whatever you have. And even if it's not yet finished, send it to the office, to the Zero Project office ahead of time. Ideally, that would be two to three months ahead. I know this is sometimes impossible. You know, I even prepared some of my slides now. So I know it's not always possible, but at least so we have an idea. The sign language interpreters, they have to look for the signs for certain things and they have to understand it. You know how quick it is to do sign language or any kind of language interpretation live for three days in a row? So if you have, if you can, please send us your information ahead of time. You would really do us a big favor and you would support barrier free information. Or what you can also do is you can prepare your own PowerPoint slides with easy information. Please be reminded people cannot multitask. People cannot look at what is written and listen to what you say, except it is captioning. 
Yeah, because captioning helps us to understand what the person just said. And I'm watching captioning going on right now. Yes, this is supported. But if you have a PowerPoint slide with a lot of text and then you say something else, people cannot follow. So send your slides, decrease the amount of text, even before this, the Zero Project Conference or any presentation, and then show pictures, pictures of your product, of your project, of happy people. Of course, happy people are very important. We want to see happy people, smiling faces, solutions being in place, somebody being empowered, but we also want to know how did you do that? So add, many of you did that, and we are, we're loving your pictures of your solutions, how they're being used, and how people's lives get better by your brilliant idea. Yeah? So you might think, uh, but we don't have pictures, we don't have photos, and that's why we're here. And now quickly, um, we'll do some more practice. Draw it yourself, okay? Draw it yourself, and now it's time for you to pick up your pen and pencil, and um, I will give you a few words that you should draw. Let me just quickly go to um, an empty slide so we can do that together, okay? Empty slide, always good to have a slide that is not set up with all these preset PowerPoint thingy because that's only confusing. So, piece of paper or slide, and now I will give you some things to do. Are you ready? I hope so. People are still here. Do we have any more uh, questions in the chat? No comments. Okay, good. Okay, first thing to draw a present for someone you really, really love. How would you draw that? I'll give you a few more seconds because I see we have 10 more minutes to go. Shall I show you how I do it or do you want to share? Anybody here who would like to hold their drawing into the camera? Probably not, and you don't have to. I will, I will show you my idea, okay? So, make sure I have the right pen. A present for someone I really, really love. First, it's a present, right? This is the present. To make sure we know this is a present, we put some ribbon around it. Oops. Maybe a little bow on top. I hope we can agree that this is a present, not a flag with a bow. Okay. Um, we could add a little bit of color that makes it a bit easier to get the glimpse. And you can already see we have some black lines in between. That's all not a problem. We are not going for pretty, we're going for understandable. Now, this is for someone we really, really, really love. Oh my God, we have a lot of love, right? Sparkles of love. Hmm? This is how I would do it. Let me just remind you of one thing. This is very metaphoric. But I kind of believe that my friends with learning disabilities, my colleagues, would understand this if I show it to them the way I just did. But be aware that metaphors and figurative speech is not always easy to understand. Just remind you of that. Okay? So this is a present for someone you really, really love. Um, next thing, your favorite animal. Hmm. We had the pig before. That's not appropriate in every culture, by the way. We have more people coming in. I love that. <laughs> okay, your favorite animal. Let's switch back to black. I go back to black. Um, yeah, my favorite animal. 
because this is one thing I can draw very well because I've been doing this when I was since I was like 10 years old or so. What do you think this will be? Anybody want the wild guess? It's not pretty, again. <laughs> um, well, this could be a rabbit, let's say. Could be nicer. The good thing with the digital media is you can do a race. You can do a lot of erasing, like here. I would do again the little chicks. I think that's a bit nicer now. OK? Your favorite animal. Maybe your favorite animal is, I don't know, a mouse or a cat, depending on what you see here. Okay, next thing. And I know that we have a bit more time than just until four o'clock, but I would rather end this quite on time. All right. But uh, one more question. Where would you like to be right now? What's your favorite place? Where would you love to be at the moment? Hmm. Don't think too complicated, though. I mean, I wish I could go to a cafe and just sit there and have a coffee and sit and talk to my friends. That would be too complicated to, to draw. But if I look outside the window, we're in Vienna and it's minus seven degrees today. I would love to be... Somewhere where the sun is shining, the birds are flying, a little bit of clouds, maybe it's somewhere in a nice place at the beach. And if you add color, it gets, of course, more lively. We'll just show you. And be careful with color, don't use too much color, but you know. We know this is the sun, right? The sun always is yellow. Oops. Don't draw blue clouds because clouds are usually white. If you have time enough, you can, you know, fill in the background light blue sky. Okay. So, um, last question: Draw your favorite food. Hmm. Again, don't talk, don't think too complicated. <laughs> um, sometimes I cannot eat too much gluten, but if I can, depends on how I I feel. I would love pizza. And again, we don't go for pretty. We go for understandable. And if I say this is pizza, do you believe me? Pizza. Favorite food. Well, you might ask yourself, why am I asking you to draw such personal things when we are here at Zero Project Conferences, where it's about a lot of issues, a lot of topics, a lot of participative methods um, to make the world more inclusive? Well, um, Many people with disabilities I know who have lived in sheltered houses for most of their life do have um, really a lack of words. They don't find the right words to say what they want. So in my job, very often I have to draw these kind of things. It's all about um, the biography of a person. Where do you come from? What do you want? Where do you want to go? So that's why I thought you might be interested in trying some of those. And it's also easier to come up with your own pictures in your head about your favorite things. Um, so to sum it all up, because we will try to end this here quite on time. Um, if you draw something, and I will provide these slides. First of all, here's the information on the devices, yeah, Microsoft Surface, iPad, 
and um, Galaxy Note. But I'm, I'm not getting any, any provision for that. Um, I'm just telling you, I'm just sharing my information. Use a simple application. Don't make it too complicated. Make sure you have some kind of device with a pen if possible. And if not, what always works, no matter what uh, mobile phone you have. And I, even my mom is using this senior citizen mobile phones. Even her phone has a camera. So you can always use pen and paper and take a picture of your drawing and insert that into your presentation. Don't, don't think complicated. The easier, the better. And of course, I, I pumped up my I pimped up my technical solution because um, I, I need it a lot. But really, everything you have is good. So that's one of the things. Um, I will also provide you with some of my slides how, where you can copy, uh, for instance, um, these speech bubbles. Um, Again, please be reminded in easy language, metaphors and figurative speech is sometimes not easy to understand. Nevertheless, we have to go into the cliche and we have to use icons and comics that are known by people. Um, but again, keep in mind to keep it simple and also make sure um, that let me just look at my cheat notes. Use commonly used um, pictures, icons, and so on. One last tip I will show you. Here in uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, you can go to, it's, I think it's pictograms, I guess, in English. And um, here, the, uh, Microsoft will provide you with a lot of icons um, that are royalty free. So, um, I'm not going to go through this whole library, but here there is already a library of things you can use. <laughs> what I sometimes do, I take one of these libraries and I use my pen and I add something to it. Like last time I had to talk about um, violence against people with disabilities and sexual abuse. So I took here, I took an icon with a bed and then I drew the rest, rest like keep people safe. Um, so cheating is allowed as long as you don't do any uh, royalty violation or privacy violation. So be careful with that. But other than that, you can use any help you can get. OK, I guess we're done. We have one minute left. Uh, we will turn off my um, turn away from the slides. And let me end with a little confession. OK, let me end with a confession and either you can see it or <laughs> the presentation will be over Then nobody will ever hear my confession. My confession is that um, one of the reasons or the main reason why I started using mind maps, scribbles and sketch notes is that I'm quite dyslexic, especially if I have to switch between languages. And it turned out to me that if I use drawings and sketches and little words, first of all, people don't see that I make mistakes. Um, because I've been la being laughed at a lot. Doesn't matter. Nevertheless, I it helps me. It helps, you know, when I look back on my notes, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, they were talking about a lot of things and I put my own memories into it. So it sticks in my head a lot better than it would be if it was just written text. And I am really, really hoping that you experience the same once you get into the passion of drawing. Let's go not for pretty, but for easier to understand. And it's not about becoming an artist. It's about helping others to understand. Thank you very much. Bye bye. <laughs> we will now turn off the chat for the, uh, and the stream for all of you who are still here. Thank you for being here. Bye.